Hello, everybody. This is Matan Kutnu, a PhD candidate at the Department of Biological Sciences at Middle East Technical University. Today, I will be guiding you through the tutorial titled Genome Assembly of a Bacterial Genome, MRSA, sequenced using Illumina MESEC data, where we're going to be assembling the genome of a methicillin-resistant Staphylococcus aureus sample, or S aureus for short. Throughout the training, you're going to be learning about sequencing by synthesis, how to check the quality of your reads, how to do a de novo genome assembly, and how to evaluate the quality of your assembly using specified tools within the Galaxy platform. You can also adapt the steps of this tutorial based on your own research question, and if you happen to have long read sequencing data sets, you can also follow the tutorial with the similar name except for Oxford Nanoform Minion data sets. So far, you may have had an introduction to the Galaxy platform, how to create a history, how to do quality control, and so on. But for the sake of revision, we're going to go through them again together. I'm going to be sharing my screen with you in a moment, and we're going to begin today's training. Let's go. To access the training material, click here on the graduation cap symbol which leads you to the main page for Galaxy training materials, where you're gonna find a variety of tutorials under different categories. If you scroll down the page, you're gonna find that today's tutorial is under the heading methodologies and the topic assembly right under the heading. Click on assembly and go down the page a little further and you're gonna find today's training right here. As I said earlier, for long read sequencing data, you can take a look at the tutorial with the similar name just above the tutorial we're gonna follow. So let's click on the tutorial we're gonna follow today. Here is an outline of today's tutorial provided by the authors and editors. You're always free to follow the links provided here. So let's start by sequencing and sequencing by synthesis. We can use sequencing for any kind of analysis we want to perform. We can do whole genome sequencing to do variant analysis or detect antimicrobial resistance genes, for instance. But to do all these, we're going to have to utilize sequencing platforms such as Illumina, PacBio, or Oxford Nanopore. Sequencing our samples via these platforms produces reads that may be of different lengths depending on the sequencing platform used. I prepared a slide that explains sequencing by synthesis. So let's go here to recap. Illumina sequencing is based on sequencing by synthesis, as I said. In this approach, fluorescent labels are measured for every base that binds at a specific moment at a particular region on a flow cell, as shown here, that's covered with oligos or short single-stranded complementary DNA. In, during the library preparation step, the DNA is cut into fragments and adapter sequences, as shown here and here, are uh, added to these fragments. Bridge amplification produces double-stranded clusters of DNA, then the reverse strand is washed away. After that, fluorescent bases are added to the single forward-stranded clusters one by one. These bases emit a specific light depending on the type of nucleotide when added. The detected light is translated to a nucleotide for each cluster, and the data is therefore base called to a nucleotide sequence or a read. Next, the quality score for every base is calculated and saved per read. The procedure is repeated for the reverse strand too on the same flow cell as shown here, so as to process them together as they come from the same DNA strand. If you go back to the tutorial or the comment box at the tutorial, you can click the link provided here for more information about sequencing by synthesis. 
Now that we went over how sequencing by synthesis works, we can continue with the data set we're going to use in today's training. The data set we're going to use is from a 2019 study by Hikichi and colleagues reporting eight methicillin resistant S. aureus strains isolated from patients in Japan. MRSA is a genetically distinct strain of S. aureus and is responsible for nosocomial infections that can be very difficult to treat. It's a strain that has developed or acquired a multiple drug resistance to certain antibiotics. MRSA infections can manifest as asymptomatic colonization, soft tissue infection, or severe fulminant disease. So identifying the strains can help us detect antimicrobial resistance genes and propose new alternative treatment methods. So here's the paper for today's tutorial we're going to follow. As you can see, they summarize their study, describe what they have done for this work. But if you scroll down the page a little further to table one, you're going to find details about each strain reported in the study. We're going to use the raw reads of one strain, specifically KUN 1163, which was originally collected from the sputum of a patient in 2014. And as you can see here, it is highly resistant to the antibiotics listed here with excessive minimum inhibitory concentration levels. So what we're going to do is we're going to first create a history and upload our data. And after that, we're going to check the quality of our reads and do some pre-processing. Next, we're going to do a de novo assembly and evaluate the quality of our assembly. So let's go. We're going to start by creating and preparing our history. Click on the plus sign symbol at the rightmost panel here to create a new history. You can name it however you like. I'll call mine MRSA assembly. To rename a history, you're gonna click on the pencil icon next to the text unnamed history, like so. And I'll change mine to MRSA assembly and click on, click save. Here you go. Next, we're gonna go back to the training material and import our raw read. If, there it is. if you scroll down the training material, you're gonna find the two links for each read, each raw read, forward and reverse. We can simply click on copy and go back to the leftmost panel and find the upload button here at the top of the panel. There are three options provided to upload your data, but since we're gonna upload the raw reads via links, we're going to click on paste fetch data. And I'm going to paste the links and click start. Click on close to close this panel. And you're going to see the files beginning to be uploaded. Now that the raw reads are uploaded, you can rename the files in your history. To do so, click on the pencil symbol next to the name of the file, the first file, for instance. 
and you can get rid of the fastqsanger.bz2 bit. If you click on save, you will have edited the data set attributes. Let's do the same thing for the reverse reads, like so. And there you go. So one of the benefits of Galaxy is that you can tag the data sets in your history to track them throughout your analyses. You'll see that as you use the tools required for your analyses, you will find out that the tag keeps moving upwards to help you locate the data set or to identify any errors, which then you can use for troubleshooting. To add a tag, click on the name of the data set, click on add tags. There are tags that I have previously added, but for the sake of revision, I'm gonna add the tag unfiltered by typing hashtag unfiltered and enter. And you can do the same for uh, reverse reads as well. Alternatively, you can click on the checkbox on the gray bar over here, check the files you want to tag, go to the blue box on the right and click add tags. Another cool thing you can do here is that you can choose files and build data set pairs or lists. It's very useful if you have a large amount of samples and you'd like to have a more tidy history that helps you follow along more, but we don't need to do that now as we only have two raw read files for one sample, but otherwise it's quite useful. Let's scroll down to the quality control section. Now that we have done the tagging, we can use FastQC to determine the quality of our reads to ensure we can use them for the assembly. As you may remember from previous tutorials, incorrect nucleotides can be called due to technical limitations of each platform during sequencing. These sequencing errors can affect downstream analyses and you may end up misinterpreting your data. Also, sometimes adapter sequences can be present when the reads are longer than the fragment sequence, so removing these improves the number of reads mapped during the assembly. So sequence quality control is a fundamental first step for whatever kind of analysis you're going to perform. Luckily, you don't have to check the qualities by hand as there are tools like Nanoplot or FastQC. Nanoplot's mainly for long reads coming from platforms such as Oxford Nanopore or PacBio, and FastQC is for short reads that come from Illumina or Sanger platforms. We'll use FastQC for our reads as they come from an Illumina MESEC sequencer. So let's go back to Galaxy and type FastQC to the search bar at the tools panel. I'll type FastQC and click on the first result. And we're going to select our raw reads by clicking the icon for multiple data sets, which is this one and select our files. We can also switch to column select so that we can see selected and unselected data better. Now that we selected the raw reads, we can run the tool in default parameters. I'm gonna click on run tool and 
this is going to produce a web page and a raw data file for each raw read file. So fast QC is done. Let's check the web page result for the first file. If you click on the eyeball icon, you're going to see the HTML file. So as you can see in the basic statistics section of this fast QC report, there is a summary of data like the file name, how many sequences there are, read length, and GC content. Let's get rid of this tools panel. And if you scroll down the report, we're going to see the per base sequence quality graph. And it's a box plot that describes the overall quality of our reads for each position or nucleotide in the read. The x-axis gives you the sequence length, while the y-axis depicts the FRED scores. The y-axis is divided into three sections, green for good quality, orange for medium quality, and red for bad quality. The median value is given with a red line. The mean value is shown with a blue line, as you can see here, it's going down in a slope. And the yellow boxes represent the interquartile ranges and the 10% and 90% are shown as upper and lower whiskers. So if we take a look at this graph, we can say that the quality of our four reads are overall good, but it's normal for Illumina data to have the first few bases, like the first five or six bases here that are of low quality. And as the read length increases, the quality becomes worse. This can be because of signal decay or phasing during sequencing. If we check the report for the reverse read, it is quite similar to the forward reads, but still the quality of our reads can be improved for downstream analyses. Before we get into assembling our reads, we may need to improve their quality, like I said. There are also a few points we need to consider, such as the genome coverage, how good our reads are, if we need to sequence our sample again, then if it's suitable for analysis. We may need to have our reads meet certain criteria, so we need to process them using FASTP. There are other tools such as CutAdapt or Trimomatic too, so I encourage you to check them out as well. For this tutorial, however, we're going to use FASTP. How are we going to trim our reads? We'll use the criteria listed in this material. First, we're going to trim the start and end of the reads if those fall below a quality score of 20, and we're going to filter for reads to keep only reads with at least 30 bases because anything shorter than 
30 nucleotides will complicate the assembly. Different tools will have different algorithms for when to cut. For example, Trimomatic will keep cutting until it reaches a base with a FRET score greater than 20. It uses a sliding window where if the average score of four bases is below 20, the read will be truncated there. So let's click on the tools button and search for fast P and click on the first result. These are paired end reads, so we're gonna click on paired. We're gonna pick the first file as our input one, the second one is already selected. Let's scroll down to filter options. And for length for the length required under length filtering options, we're gonna enter 30 as we're gonna keep reads with at least 30 bases. If we scroll down further to the read modification options, like so, and then to per read cutting by quality options, which is here, we're gonna change the options for cut by quality in front and back to yes. The cutting window size to four and the cutting mean quality to 20. And we could also change the output options to give us a JSON report from the output options like so. Let's run the tool and wait for the results. So here you can see the FASTB output files from seven to 10. We're gonna change the tags of these files from unfiltered to filtered by clicking on this checkbox at the gray bar right here and select our files. And by clicking on this blue box, we're going to add the tag filtered by clicking on, clicking here and add hashtag filtered. Enter, okay. But we're gonna have to remove the unfiltered tags because now we have process files. So we're gonna do the same thing. Click on this checkbox at the gray bar, select the files, click on the blue box, and this time click on remove tags and type unfiltered, enter, and okay. Now these are the filtered files. So FASTP produces two types of files in default settings, but there's also a JSON report file because we selected it. So if you wanna view the web page output from FASTP, simply click on the eyeball icon next to FASTP HTML report. You're gonna see a summary of the processed files and the statistics before and after filtering those files. You can see that for the first file, the read length went down to 189 base pairs. And for the second file, it's reduced to 219 base pairs. The 
Q20 and Q30 percentages given here uh, increased for both files as well. As for the GC content, it seems unaffected by trimming because as you can see, their percentages are almost the same. So we can say that our data is good for use for assembly. Now for the DeNova assembly, we're gonna use Shovel, a spades-based tool for short read data. It works faster and is suitable for smaller bacterial genomes. Again, if we go back to Galaxy, we're gonna type Shovel into the search box and see the tool page here. We're gonna select paired end again, because these are paired end reads, but this time they're processed. So we're gonna select the output files from FASTP. For forward reads, we're gonna select data seven or read one output. For the reverse reads, we're gonna select data eight for read two output. If we go back to the paper or table one at this, of the state paper, we're going to see that for our sample KUN 1163, the genome size is 29145678. So let's go back to Galaxy and click Advanced Options. And if we scroll down, we can change the estimated genome size to 21945678. And let's run the tool again. So will is running as you can see. We're going to have three output files from Showwheel, a log file, a FASTA file of context, and another file with the context graph or the assembly graph. This file provides us the most information about our assembly. So how does the content graph output from Showwheel provide us the most information about the assembly? It has the sequences of all assembled fragments, including the ones shorter than the defined threshold length to be included in the output for FASTA output, and how much the fragments cover the genome on average so that they can be used to fix the ambiguities manually. So, Let's go back to the training material again. To view the assembly graph, we're going to be using Bandage. It's a package to export assembly graphs through summary reports and visualization graphs. But first, Let's go back to the output files from Showwheel to change their tags to assembly by adding tags, hashtag assembly, enter, click OK, and we're going to remove the filtered tag this time. Click on this checkbox select our output files and from this blue box click on new tags and type hashtag filtered hit enter and okay so we're gonna or we can now 
visualize or use, we can now use the package bandage to summarize and visualize our assembly. First, we're gonna summarize our assembly by using the tool bandage info. We're gonna type bandage info to the search bar and click on the first result and select the contact graph output from Showell as our input. We're gonna run the tool and it's running. So let's see the output file. Click on this eyeball icon. What we're gonna see is a summary of the assembly. Here, the contacts are given as nodes and the connections between them are given as edges. As you can see, the number of nodes or contacts is a bit higher than expected. There are 131 contacts, but what we'd expect to see would be a single contact that represents the whole genome itself or a fewer number of contacts. There are only two contacts that are not leading to any other contacts, and these are called dead ends. To understand this better visually, Let's try to visualize the assembly now. I'm going to type bandage image into the search box. And when I type bandage, the tool name appears. So let's click on bandage image. And I'm going to select the content graph output from Showell again as the graphical fragment assembly. And I won't change any parameters and I, I can run the tool now. So it's up and running. And there we go. Now let's take a look at this graph. Let's click on this eyeball again. Let's get rid of this tools panel. As you can see, the assembly seems to be messy with a lot of contacts and paths through the sequence. As I said earlier, the genome itself isn't reconstructed accurately in a single contact. If we go back to the training material and scroll down a little and click on this link at the bandage wiki, which I opened here, you're gonna see the example provided by the developers of this package. Like in this example, there could be times where we might not know the structure of our genome and there could be repeating sequences denoted as red bars in this genome or this hypothetical genome and others, there can be other structural elements as well. And sometimes these elements or repeating sequences could be longer than the reads and sequences that share a region can be given as separate contexts, as is the case here. To prevent the construction of such complex assemblies, hybrid assemblies are done where both short and long read sequencing data are used. So let's evaluate our assembly quality to do so, we're gonna be using QOST, which provides quality metrics for assemblies. It can be used with or without a reference genome, but if you use it without a reference, you cannot find out about structural variations such as 
inversions or translocations or potential misassemblies. Nevertheless, it's still useful for the no assemblies as well. So let's go back to Galaxy, click on tools and type POST into the search bar and click on the first result. And we're gonna select co-assembly as the assembly mode. We won't be using customized names for the input files. So instead we're gonna use the data set names. I'm gonna choose the context output file from Showville. It's already pre-selected and run the tool in default parameters. Now that cost is done, we can view the HTML report by clicking on the eyeball. Like FastQC and FastP, cost also produces an HTML file with metrics and graphs. And in this file, you're gonna see the number of contexts, the assembled genome size, GC content, and so on. So the assembled genome size is given as total length that are greater than or equal to zero base pairs. And it is quite close to the genome size given in the paper by Hikichi and colleagues. And the GC content is also pretty much similar to the output from FASTP. So these results are coherent with expected results. Now that we reached the end of this tutorial, let's sum up what we did today. To wrap up, we first uploaded the short read data set to our history, check their quality using FastQC, process them to obtain higher quality reads as output by using FastP, assemble the processed reads de novo with Showwill, and finally, we evaluated the quality of the assembly using different tools such as Quast, Bandage Info, and Bandage Image. Though the assembly is incomplete and the hybrid assembly method could be more useful in this case, the output is still reasonably good to use in downstream analyses such as antimicrobial resistance gene detection. And with that, the training for today is over. Thank you so much for watching and following along with the tutorial. I hope it was easy to follow and I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please give us a feedback. And if you have any suggestions or questions, feel free to communicate with other members of the community through Galaxy Health Forum or The Matrix. Thank you for watching and see you in the upcoming tutorials. Bye.